What's up, people? So today we're going to be going over the F50 Gatlin beam and the Y33 headlights. It's uh, actually pretty easy to do. It just takes a few tools. So uh, without further ado, let's get into it. So to take off this lens, there's three different steps. You want to take off all of these retaining clips. There's five of them, three on top, two underneath. Then you want to take out these three screws right here. And then lastly, you want to take off this ballast. So let's get started. Okay, all the little clips, bolts, and nuts and screws are all off, as well as the ballast. And make sure you put them in a little plastic bag. Don't wanna lose those. And then next, you're gonna wanna take your heat gun and just heat all along this seam for about five, 10 minutes. And I definitely recommend the heat gun over the oven. Uh, number one reason is it only makes this part hot. So you can still handle it, no problem. When you put it in an oven, it gets hot as hell and you can actually burn yourself. Plus you don't want plastic in your oven. That's gross. So here I am just slowly working my heat gun across the joint between the lens and the housing. Um, you really just wanna take your time with this. Uh, be careful not to pry too quickly. Um, you don't have to use much force once the glue is hot enough. Um, so yeah, just take your time and it should pop right off. So here we have the lens popped off, and here we have the exposed housing. So I found the best way to remove this is to loosen both of the leveling screws. So there's one right there on the bottom right, and there's also one right here on the top left. Oh, but there's also a third stud that you cannot remove. Um, so I found the best way to remove the actual high beam housing is to loosen both of these leveling screws, uh, there's one there, one there. Mm -hmm. Just turn both to the left till it pops free. And then once those are free, then you just rip the high beam housing out and uh, should break cleanly. So here we have the new F50 lens uh, ready to go in. Um, you'll note that it is pretty big. So you'll wanna just separate it in half. Uh, there's three screws, uh, and then you can just use the Gatlin beam portion. Um, so you won't have a high beam anymore, but you'll have Gatlin gun headlight, so who cares? So to separate this housing, you wanna take off these two zinc brackets first on either side, and then you can take off the rear housing with these three screws right there. All right, let's get started. So here we have the separated F50 lens. Uh, so for the next step, you want to make a backing plate out of a piece of acrylic and then put some foil tape on that. And that'll accomplish two things. It'll uh, stop any light from bleeding through to the rest of the headlight. And it'll also make your LEDs much brighter. So I actually used a Dremel with a cutoff wheel to make my backing plate. And you can use the outline of the back portion of the F50 lens. It'll give you a nice clean line to cut. And then once you finish that, you can just use the foil tape and that'll aid in the reflection, make your LEDs nice and bright. All right, and here's that piece of acrylic that I made. So I ended up adding my own wires to the LED strips. I soldered them, then hot glued them, and then heat shrinked it. I was really quite proud of this. It came out really nice. And for the mounting, I uh, just added them to the inside of the F50 lens and then super glued it. Uh, I don't want these to come loose and I definitely don't want to dig through the headlight in case one of them does. Um, so super glue definitely works well. Um, and I should mention too that I tried both this method and uh, just adding a center bulb to the backing plate. And the LED strips looked much, much better. Definitely recommend this. You probably even fit four strips in there. Uh, I thought two was plenty, but it's really up to you. 
Okay, so once you finish mounting the LEDs, you can throw the backing plate on, fish the wires through, and the most important step is testing it. So let's do that. Now I should get a test bench. But why do you use a test bench? We have a fully built S13 coupe. Yeah, these lights have these really cool anti-dazzling effect. I'm assuming from those half moon shades. Neat. All right, it's in. Now I haven't really found the best way to mount these. I think using this Gorilla Tape, putting three layers on that ridge and then one layer on that ridge seems to keep it pretty sturdy. And then the housing, that will also keep it in place. So let's give that a shot. All right, the Gorilla Tape is in. And it's pretty sturdy. I know it's probably not the best way to mount it, but it's definitely the simplest. And it's actually convenient because you can use the tape as shims. And I actually used four pieces here. Uh, that way you can get it to the right level. So if you have a better idea, you know, please let me know. Love to hear it. Yeah, that looks great. Very hyped on that. Now we just have to heat it up, smash the lens down. So how you wanna wire these is really up to you. I plan on using these with my parking lights, but you could keep them as a high beam once you finish one of them. Now you get to repeat the process all over again. And yes, in case you're wondering, I did restore my headlight lenses I didn't film it though, because it's boring and there's a million videos on YouTube on how to do that. But here's a finished product. I think it came out great. All right, so here they are in their final form. Uh, overall, I think it came out pretty good. Uh, it definitely was better than expected and it really isn't too expensive. Um, you can get a pair of headlights from the junkyard for about 80 bucks. So you need the Y33 and the F50 uh, so that brings it to 160 and then about 40 bucks for tape, LEDs, other little knickknacks. So about 200 bucks all in. So I can't be mad about that. But yeah, overall it was fun. Uh, let me know what you guys think in the comments. Uh, and if you like this video, feel free to like and subscribe. All right, cheers. Thanks.